Hi there. Let's just make sure everything is all adjusted here. Good. All right, so um, welcome to the stream. Today uh, we're going to continue on with our Chronicles of Illyria graphic tale uh, called Debt's Ode. And um, you'll see that uh, I've actually done uh, uh, quite a bit of work um, in between streams on this uh, comic. Um, so uh, we, I didn't advance the inking very much, but um, I did get all the text laid into the story uh, for... Um, because I didn't want to sit here and... Um, Try to stream my, you know, writing process to you. You know, sitting for five to ten minutes trying to decide how to word something, how to arrange those words in a bubble, and all that stuff. Um, if you want to ask questions about that, I'm happy to answer questions about that. But um, I didn't, um, I didn't think it would make good streaming material. So, uh, so I went ahead and laid in um, all the text bubbles, and I'll do some editing and some fiddling with some of these because they don't all look the way I want them to. But, um, yeah, so uh, all that remains now is to ink. Um, so we have four more panels here to ink, and then we'll uh, get into 
uh, the other pages uh, after that. We'll see how far we can get. Um, these last few panels shouldn't take too much time, so we'll just get into it. I did a, a pretty extensive redraw of this panel here um, in order to um, get the right perspective on the shield and hammer, come or shield and mace coming together. Um, and uh, the way that his arm and shoulders would have to move in order to achieve that. Also still get this stab in, so um, my original drawing was like the shield was like way out here and tilted towards the viewer a little bit more. Uh, that doesn't work for this kind of strike, so. But, that um, redraw gave me a much better idea of this figure here, so I'm just going to go ahead and <laughs> pop in a new vector layer in the appropriate folder. Not that one. Vector layer on there. Oh, that's right. I started to draw the shield. I'll just trash that. That's no good. All right. Too thick. 30 brush size. We were at trees I was talking about the golden ratio I use the same thing to determine where the arc comes into play on the shield so this is actually far too low I need to start bringing the arc in somewhere here oh, it's a huge eraser So I clean up all my little trailing lines here. Oh, and I actually don't need this line either. That was just the, there to confirm the other line. Uh, so I just put my stripes in and I'll try to hash those in. How many? Oh, just two. So that 
put it right about here. I think this is still very too very large. His head to his groin. So actually, that's too small. Huh. All right. Well, that's easily remedied. My shield is way too small. Uh, as a ratio of body coverage and everything like that, it's not doing the job. So somewhere in there, <clears throat> while I was trying to fudge with the perspective, I lost sight of the size of the thing. No big deal, just boop, boop, boop. So this should reach from the top of his head to about his groin in order to match the size of the shield in the first image. And his arm is roughly parallel to the chief. To redo this thing entirely. It is not working out. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start a new vector layer. Go back down here to my pencil layer.
That's better. I just wasn't making the chief big enough. Okay. So... Scoop up. center anymore. Okay, so that one's roughly from the center. <clears throat> and that goes, extends to, well into the curve. Everybody. 
Okay, so this is the proper proportion of the bottom uh, of the shield to the top of the shield. Because that's what I've been struggling with, is that the proportions of the upper parts of the shield were not in the right ratio. And I'm still not quite right, but... I want it to be right about here. So then, I don't want to change First I'm going to select the entire shield And I don't want to change its width Because its perspective isn't changing Or, yeah, its perspective isn't changing But I do want to change its uh, overall height So I'm going to move it down here So that the part that I want to cross over his arm Is now the center of the image I'll move the center of the image right there so the shield will expand outward from that point depending on which axis I pull on so long as I hold alt and then I can go like this and that'll keep the place where the arm strap is centered on his arm and you can still get the right size of shield
Hmm. Okay, well, still struggle, struggling with this ratio. I think it was a threefold problem. Still not correct on the shape of it over here. So it's throwing things off. So I need this to start earlier and carve into. So with that in mind, <laughs> let's get to our ink layer finally. And I'm going to start with the shield because it's, well you know what, I'm going to start with actually the mace. because that's in the foreground. So, I don't know, I don't know what compelled me to make this thing so knobby and, and outlandish, but um, I had a notion that like this might be some kind of gaudy heirloom that's been in the family for ages, and uh, perhaps even uh, might come as a point of, um, or come as a, um, uh, I guess a plot element in their reckoning of, of the or evening the score over the ages between our two characters. Thank you. 
when you bring it into the hot air, it does massive damage. Leave it in the snow mountains. Leave it in the snow mountains. Leave it in the snow mountains. wrong with perspective on this hand. It's that thumb. Let's try this again.
Try this hand all over again. <laughs> we'll assume the perspective on the hammer works for now, but the grip that I originally sketched in there isn't working. So I'm holding, I'm holding a long tubular object so I can figure out what exactly it is my hand is doing when it swings like this. So we'll go down to the red layer again. Oh, you know what, I need a new pencil layer for this. Let's make it, uh... Okay, so starting with the nearest joints, I'm just going to be drawing only what I see, not what is not visible. Even though I know the forms continue through, right now I'm just trying to figure out what have to account for in the visual field. And another thing that I can do as I go along is I'm looking at the way that the different objects interact with one another to measure them. So I'm looking at where the pinky and the meat of the, uh, the thumb joint here um, interact uh, and I'm noticing you know that this finger and this finger touch this finger does not but it's close and then that goes into the crease of my hand and so the other half of the hand is coming down and behind and up here completing the picture so then I've got an extreme angle on the protuberance here of the ulna. As it hits the wrist joint, that completes the picture. Now my arm's tired. Alright, back up to my inks. Oh. So here I will actually follow through. I live in Sandy and I'll be there 
out loud. And even though this is straight, we're giving it a little bit of a bow to show how its inertia is affected by the motion and the extreme perspective. Okay. So, so much for this layer not taking as much time as I thought it might. But that's okay. Uh, it's wobbly as hell. I guess I'm, I'm hoping that the deformation of the object See, the problem is, this oval here, so this, this oval down here and this oval down here are not in the same perspective. I wasn't really paying attention there. I was paying more attention to the warping that I was expecting, and I wasn't actually making sure that the object lined up with itself. So, I'm going to try to... I'm going to visually trace these, kind of like use my hand to trace the oval a few times just to get a feeling of it. And, and then I'm going to try to put it over here. Okay.
There we go. And there's a similar oval, well, I guess, I mean, because of the lines along the central column, there's similar ovals all along here, but they should be all... to make sure I get all of them. Okay. So next time we'll keep the weapons simple and elegant. <laughs> but I think I've got what I'm looking for here. Alteration, and I'm going to try this just to see if it works. It might not. Yeah. 
That actually did work the way I wanted to. I just had to think about it spatially. So, yeah, I want this to be a little bit of a wandering curve. To show the opposition of forces going on here as he tries to swing and, and meets resistance. So, a couple more ink lines on the foreground figure here. Just a matter. 
Okay, so clothing wraps around a figure in rotation from there up to here, but not very much because we're in extreme foreshortening. We also got a strap right there, and another strap up here. front of the armor. And in the foreground, just in view, the cross guard of the sword that is sticking in his shoulder. I'm sure that's not comfortable. smaller to draw so I can be a little more consistent. And follow through.
Okay, if there's a skull in here... Let's find it. Presumably the eyes would be here... here...
That's the sound of getting stabbed. Schlicked. Actually, probably gonna do, let's see here. Let's do the text and sound effects on its own layer. And then first I'll trace this in, I'm gonna change the background color so I can see this properly, but. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, looks like I already tried on previous layers. Great. Okay. And he looks pleased to be winning this fight, which is a pretty creepy look. Alright, so let's get the rest of his armor in here. Okay, I just need to draw a little bit of an outline here. From the face cage. A much finer line. And I think that, oh, and these little Bits of armor here.
So if we turn off all our extra lines there, I'd say it looks pretty good. I think I might have to re-ink this hand right here. It looks pretty shaky compared to the rest of the art. It still looks strange. Gosh, hands, hands are the worst. Like, I've been drawing for, gosh, since I could pick up a crayon, and I still have a hard time drawing hands. As many times as you practice hands in particular configurations, like this one here, this grip in the, um, let's get back on it here. No? Why can't I, oh, there. So, this little... You know, looking at the back of your hand thing. I and mean, that was hard in so much as I had to reverse my view of my right hand in order to draw a left hand holding something. But <coughs> that's a grip I've drawn so many freaking times before. Like, I just, I understand how those fingers go together. And so uh, the observation and just knowing the way that these pieces interact um, helps. Same with kind of like this front on knuckle view of the hand. I draw a lot of that. But this foreshortened looking down at something coming in from a side swipe. Like there's just so much going on there. We'll leave off that for now. I do want to come down here and redraw while I'm here this um, word balloon that I don't like. Um, we'll just grab it and delete it. And do a new one. So I used the balloon pen and I wanted to get like some kind of agonized yeah. That's hard to do when I can't see what I'm drawing. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of these black frames here. I'm getting a phone call. One second. Oh, that's the worst. You get a freaking credit card predator calling me in the middle of the drawing. All right. Um, oh, yeah, so I was working on this word balloon. Uh, and I need to get some of the page elements out of my way. So that I can see. my lines. These sorts of balloons are hard to draw because you have to be more or less mindful of the center at all times. Because all your points should be emanating from the center of the circle. And they all need to be roughly equidistant. So I might try looking, doing something that's deliberately shaky. And then with shaky, you just have to make sure that you maintain a similar distance. Yeah, I like that better. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you need to maintain a similar distance all around the, uh, the figure, which is easy because I can just grab the text and, and move it around. Where's my gya? It's up here. I just want 
text, so I need the text tool. There we go. So I center the text and confirm that change. Then I need my balloon tail. So bringing those uh, um, helmet uh, insets back online, what I've done also for the audio here is on the side of the person, so I'm, I'm making sure that the bubbles bridge the center line because they are happening more or less simultaneously. There's not a lot of time. This is the only frame set actually where any time passes beyond um, the instantaneous moment that we see uh, in these two frames. Like here, these are simultaneous. Um, down here, these are simultaneous. Uh, these are slightly asynchronous, but not much, just long enough for them to, you know, spout off their one-liners at the beginning of the fight, exchange a few quick blows, and then, uh, you know, end. But in each case, in order to show that synchronicity um, and, and the fact that these moments are tied closely, I'm putting tiny little mini balloon tails on the side of the helmet in which the voice is echoing. So you hear your, so it's as if he's hearing his voice echo back at him from, from the faceplate. And then on his side, he's actually seeing the person with the V-slit helmet speak it. So, uh, and, and here it's the same way. Bard helmet is saying, recant your lies. So it's echoing here, and then it's pointing, whoops, it's pointing at him from the perspective of V-helmet. It, it feels a little confusing, I think, but... Um, I don't know, maybe you can tell me, because uh, I, uh, I've been sitting here reading it for forever. But <laughs> V-Helmet is going to gya in response. Oh, and then, once again, this needs to emanate from the center of the balloon towards his mouth. And then, again... Three little mini tails. And then, so now that that's fixed, more or less. Uh, oh, I wonder if I can do, if I can make alterations. Oh, I can. Oh, good. Oh, well, that makes this so much better. Nope. Fine, fine, fine. So, good. We'll agitate that edge a little bit, make it look a little more purposeful. Make these Vs stand out here a little bit more. Sound effects. All right, so I think we're over here now. We are. Drop a vector layer in. coffee twin tragedies what do we like what do we like what do we like oh I wonder if I can do Ah, 
Excellent. This is Roster McCabe. It's good uh, kind of new wave reggae jam music. I like it a lot. Okay, so the idea here is to have the gap where the, the breastplate circles around the, the pectoral muscle and the side of the chest. There's a little gap there. And ostensibly these little like circlets are meant to cover that gap and protect it from incoming blows. But um, he'll be exposed with his lunge and um, we'll be taking advantage of that. Uh, so I just need to make sure that however it lines up, that gap in his armor is right there. So I'm gonna start there. Draw the sword. I'm gonna redraw the blade here because I think it's not on the same projection as the rest of the sword. That's better.
extreme. up just a little bit.
If I go back here, I can grab my sound effects and just copy them over. And uh, then I can scale and rotate it down to make sure that fits within the image and the composition and Just a little bit of detail down here at the bottom of the figure, and So, <clears throat> on the back of the shield up here, it looks like I ruled out a bunch of lines in order to give that uh, a texture, uh, or at least some kind of shading. Uh, what I actually did was I created a tone layer, uh, which is down here um, on the uh, selector bar, you can see new tone near the end, and if you click on that, you can set up, and you know the last settings that I used are here, which is convenient because uh, I'll want them again. Um, but um, you can set this up to be any kind of method of using halftone dots to um, uh, to fill a um, uh, a tone. And this is really nice because this is used a lot in comics, and it's <clears throat> not used very much often anymore. Um, but uh, I really like the way that it works. But it's a really easy way to get some ruled lines. 
So um, I set how dark I want it to be by density, and then the number of screen frequency, that's the, um, the amount of uh, distance in between the, the different figures. So we like increase this, it increases the number of lines uh, in each set, in each repetition. So I really want just big, you know, uh, chunky lines. So that's what I'm going with here. And also you can set the angle um, up or down in order to change how it lines up on the grid. Of course, I'm going with 128 degrees because that's a nice even, what just happened? Did you just take me back to this other layer? It's in a whole other frame. Why are you making me do this again? All right, so apparently I have to duplicate this layer. move it down to where I'm working. It won't let me create a new... So anyways, now that I have this little area selected, I can just draw with any pen and it will conform to that pattern. And that's the real magic here because then I can set things up to be exactly matching the forms that I'm uh, trying to cover and it will remain consistent throughout. So this is a lot easier than ruling out lines. So the only thing that I have to watch out for is that the angle of my lines don't cause any tangents or otherwise distract from the view of uh, important elements. Um, which is easy enough uh, here in this composition, but um, it's just something to watch out for. That'll break up the tones there rather nicely. Okay, pretty simple details from here on out. Um, extreme foreshortening on the figure here just means we're not gonna be drawing hardly anything, which actually works out really well. Of all the extreme perspectives you can go with, this is probably the easiest.
Alright, one last reversal of perspective. And we're set.
that was relatively simple not much going on in that panel just a reversal of the previous perspective really simple sword in the throat and so that I think does it for the basic inks on the first page or I mean well the second page the first complete page of inking so let me just get rid of my pencil lines in the other frames. We'll take a look at it all as one. 
some white paper. Where? Oh no. Ha. <laughs> All right, so um I made a mistake. And drew these lines on the wrong layer. <laughs> there we go. So we'll go back in here and just paste that down. No problem. All right. So, um, yeah, let's look at this whole thing and see what we got. Um, so there's some more shading to do, uh, lots more black to put down, and maybe some other tones. Um, but as far as getting the, uh, the page, it's, excuse me, the page itself worked up. This is uh, looking pretty successful. Get rid of these lines here. Um, so. That actually puts us at two hours. So that's our time for today. Uh, we'll start on page one, inks, um, tomorrow. And then uh, we'll get page three done. And that ought to be it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm liking the way this is going. I think uh, the story and the pacing fit well into uh, the overall comic, the visual elements of tilting into uh, the flashback and then back out of it seem to be working very successfully. And overall, I'm pretty happy with how this is going. It's taken longer than I wanted it to, but that's, that's comics in a nutshell, right? Uh, it's a lot of work and um, just when you think something is going to go easily, it doesn't, and you have to try and try and try again. So I hope you enjoyed watching me try and try again and solve some of these problems that continually crop up when you're trying to uh, do visual storytelling and visual narrative. Um, uh, please come back again tomorrow around uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. That's 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. I'll be doing more of the same until I get this thing done. And um, I hope you enjoyed watching and listening to some chill music. And uh, if you did enjoy your time here, please think about supporting me either with a few cheers uh, uh, or um, maybe even a subscription. I also have a Patreon. You can find the link down in my uh, description below. And there's all kinds of goodies you can earn by uh, supporting uh, uh, me through my Patreon. Um, you know, and that's uh, really valuable support that helps me continue to be a working professional artist. So. Uh, Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.